Welcome to the girls. Today we're taking you back to school. We're visiting King's College in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And we are with the president of the college, Father Jack Ryan, right here. Thank you for joining us, Father. Good to be with the girls. Thank That's you right. so much. We're so familiar with the college, but we are very surprised to come in and see the new room which we're standing in. This is the Innovation Center, and it's newly renovated, and it's something that's going on here at the college all the time. You're always renovating and making things new and better for the college students. Well, we are. This was a refresh a couple weeks ago, and it allows the students to get together and work in teams and share their technologies, but also to work with teams throughout the country and across the world. Uh, just last week, the uh, students were working with a professor in Korea, and so it, it uh, certainly cuts the distance. Uh, it, technology really brings the world together in a, in a whole different way. So this is uh, one of the ways that we're trying to make the world a little bit smaller for our students. As we talked about before we started the show, uh, King's theme has always been making a living, making a life. Right. King's College has been no stranger to our family as my dad went here, my brother and I went here, my dad taught here. I'm teaching here now. We're actually in the building, the McGowan building where I teach. It's one of my favorite buildings aside from the communications department area, which is right. uh, still located in the girls' dorm, correct? That's correct. All That's right, correct. but it's good to be here with you and uh, good to introduce the community to what King's right. College is all about, not academically only, but also sure. we'll be talking with the basketball team later on. Sure, absolutely. Well, it's good to, good to have you here. And uh, Janine, as you mentioned, uh, right from the founding in 1946, uh, the first president of King's College said that uh, King's College teaches students not only how to make a living, but how to make a life. And I think to this day we take that very, very seriously. 99% um, of our students, uh, six months after graduation, either have a job or in graduate school. But also, by the time they graduate, graduate they've spent uh, dozens and dozens of hours on community service. Mm -hmm. So it's really about building two documents, about building great resumes and building great eulogies. Uh, that they master a complex body of knowledge, but they use that for the common good. So those two themes have been happening here at King's uh, right from the very founding. Talk about the uh, photo that we have up. Oh, right, uh, that, that photo was in today's King's Today. It's a publication that updates what's going on at King's. And uh, we have a student and a young uh, girl in Haiti. Uh, our, we have eight of our physician assistant students went to Haiti recently, and they worked in a clinic um, and as you can see, hundreds and hundreds of students have been touched and ministered to by our students. And we're going to send another batch in, uh, in a couple more weeks. But I thought the picture really encapsulated this making a living, making a life. Um, Wilton Curiel in that picture is just an outstanding student, overcame a lot of different obstacles in his life. And now is a, going to be a professional physician assistant and just looks forward to ministering uh, in unusual ways. Well, Father, you mentioned earlier that uh, when we were speaking that you've been president for about six years. That's and right. it does take a lot of energy to keep the college at the standard with which you are familiar with and with which we're familiar with. You always have changes and improvements. You're always adding academics to it. So what are right. some of the new things we could look forward to? Right, great. So um, this year, actually, in the fall, we had our largest class in the history of King's College. And not only that, it was the most academically accomplished uh, class in King's College. And that's been a result of a number of programs we've been building out over the last couple of years. What we're working on right now, starting in fall of 2017, is a brand new, two new brand new programs in civil engineering and mechanical slash industrial engineering. Yeah. Northeastern Pennsylvania has no civil engineering and uh, no industrial engineering. So we're, we're excited about this. The applications have been very, very strong. And we also have a dual program in engineering with the University of Notre Dame. Uh, that's been going on for three years. This fall, I had dinner with our first 13 students at Notre Dame. And I was curious, you know, how mm -hmm. are you doing? Uh, you feel like second class citizens, are you behind? <laughs> they said, no, we, we feel we're every bit as prepared and every bit as accomplished as the students at the University of Notre Dame. So uh, the people from this region uh, can compete and do compete from people throughout the country and throughout the world, no matter the institution. Well, that's a great tribute to you and, of course, all the professors and teachers who are here. I think the whole community uh, it should be proud of what they do. We are proud to be here and we're proud to be a part of King's College. We're proud to have you with us today. As we go along, when we come back, we're going to be speaking with a new group, KC Wise, and they're a group of faculty and students, women and men, from all majors and disciplines who support the idea of women in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we're going to speak with them and later we're going to see if 
We can get Father Ryan to play a game of hoops here on the girls. Good luck on that one. Get your sneakers ready. We'll be right back. Now we're at the administration building. We're actually in the gold room and we're with a new group here. It's called Casey Wise and we're going to learn all about it uh, with faculty and students here at King's College. So Elise, tell us what is Casey Wise and how did it come about? Sure, so KCY stands for King's College Women in Science and Engineering. And we started this group about a year ago. It's a faculty-led initiative. And what we are is we're a group uh, that provides support, guidance, and resources for women in what we call the STEM fields, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. And this really came about because we looked around and we realized that we have a very dynamic, vibrant female faculty population within the science, technology, engineering, and math fields right here at King's. 50% of our faculty population within the STEM fields are women. All and right. so, yeah. <laughs> and so we thought, why don't we organize ourselves and get an organization to support female STEM students too? Because our dynamic female STEM professors are right here, so why not get students involved? And that's kind of the story of our origin. That's how we got around. Well, Victoria, what is your major and how has this uh, program helped you? Why is it so important for you? Um, my major is chemistry with chemical engineering, but I actually started off as physics and mechanical engineering. And this whole organization is important to me because when I was making the decision to even switch my major, I went to Dr. Heiss and she really told me uh, what I ex to expect in that new field. And even my twin sister, she goes to the professors all the time asking about research opportunities or any possible help for future guidance. So it means a lot to me to have that support system always. And Janine, there are three major pillars that uh, you actually focus on with this group. And it's important because this gets the students involved. It actually attracts more students to King's College. And then I know being a woman myself, stepping into a field of communications, back when I started in this field, there weren't a lot of women in the field. And it was kind of intimidating at a young age, stepping into a role that I was being working side to side with so many men and a male dominant uh, major. So yeah, there are three things that are basically a huge part of KCYs. The first is we do professional development for our students, and this is open to the male and female members of KCYs, the students, as well as the faculty and staff of KCYs. For example, two weeks ago, we brought in six King's College alumni, and they gave a great panel discussion about their experience and how they got to where they were and the struggles that they faced as women to get to where they were and the positives that being a woman got them to where they were. So we have professional development events. We also do social events, a way to just get together, meet new people. And again, this is open to anyone who's a part of KCYs, and it's just an opportunity for students to come together with faculty, meet new people. And then thirdly, we do mentoring. So this is just for the female students, and we pair up a younger female student with an older female student and a faculty member. So that way they have someone new to kind of help guide them, help navigate what it's like to be a female in an area that's still somewhat male dominated and how do you navigate when you're a computer science female and you're you know the only female in the room aside from Dr. Jump and <laughs> and what's that like and, and and letting them know like they have support beyond just the teachers that they see we're a community of people who support the women in STEM. Yeah well how about the professors now isn't this great for you and all the instructors as well so how about telling us something from your perspective, how you see it, how it's helped the students. I was just going to say, when I was a, a physics undergraduate, I was one of the few female students in uh, my department. In my entire time in college and in grad school, I never had a female physics professor. You know, so it was hard. You think about silly things like going to a conference and asking, what should I wear? It, you know, my advisor, he wore jeans and a ratty t-shirt all the time. <laughs> and so he, he was not very helpful in how to dress professionally. And when I came to King's, I'm in the physics and chemistry department. And uh, when I first came here in 2002 I was the only female member um, in the department and so you know, I would have female students who I was their go-to person and so I think it's amazing you know in the 15 years since I've been here to see how much has changed you know the number of female faculty have um, increased um, and I hope that that would mean female students would increase as well because you know research has shown that uh, students are more likely to go someplace where they can see themselves fitting in. And I hope this provides a community you know, to let our students know, you know, this is a place where you can fit in and be successful. 
I love it. Well, we have to point out the obvious. We do have a male student in the room with us, and I really would love to hear his perspective. Um, so, Dylan, uh, you know, you're the smartest one here because if I, you know, if you want to meet some girls here at King's College, why not just join the uh, women-based group here? So, Dylan, uh, give us your perspective on why this is that why this was important for you to join such a group. Right. Well, yeah, sure, I'm a guy, but that doesn't mean I don't support women in STEM fields. You know, I think it's important, male or female, student, faculty, staff, whatever you are. I mean, why wouldn't you support equal employment opportunities, opportunities for male and female students to be equal, you know, anything like that. Dylan for president. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Anybody open forum here? Bria's reaching for it. <laughs> there you go. Um, I know so far, like, all of the advisement that I've gone through this program has been very helpful to me. Um, this summer, I plan on doing an RE program out in California, and that's all thanks to my advisors. and. It happened through my advisor, Dr. King Cannon, over there. She helped me by setting up my resume, and she gave me a wonderful recommendation that I sent out there. And then it also, we did, with the programs we have through mentoring, I, we actually did a dinner through this program at Casey Wise, and I was able to tell about my experience to my mentors and to some of the other people that we went to dinner with, um, some of the students here, and I was able to tell them about the RUs. And so, like, I think that just shows how I was able to get help and then pass it on to some other mentors, too. So really, I, it, this program is making a difference already. And I just wanted to mention also because the, that um, what's not known to a lot of people is STEM. People, everybody says we know what STEM is. It's science, technology, engineering, and math. But it's beyond like the definition is broader than we think. Mm -hmm. um, Margarita is an economics professor. It includes social sciences and psychology and economics. And, and it, science is defined very broadly by the NSF, and that's the definition we take. And so it, it actually covers a broad range of our majors. Mm -hmm. It's not just the physics and the chemists, even though that's a lot of the people who are, are sitting here around, uh, around Margarita is one of them. She's not speaking up, so I'm speaking up for her, right? So I wanted to make sure that that was known, that it's not, it's not just chemists and physics and, and computer scientists that are part of this group. It is a much broader, broader group. And for the students, too, I mean, there's so much stress that goes along with being uh, in college and being a college student. I hear it from my own students in my, in my classes that it's nice to know that you can relate when you can relate with your professors and especially on a, a campus like King's. We are a small campus, but we are so broad in knowledge and what Father Ryan had talked about that is we have so many resources with Notre Dame um, and, and here that we, we have a lot of knowledge outside of the campus. But um, as far as the women here, as far as being here in college and how does that make you feel to know that you have that common ground, that you have this group, you have women to rely on and really ask questions? Does that put you at ease? My first um, encounter um, here at King's, Dr. King Cannon was actually my freshman advisor. And so from the beginning, I was embraced with um, somebody who I could go to and somebody I could trust in. And then as I became a chem major, I decided Dr. Heiss became my advisor. And so I see both of them daily. And so even like um, in the mentoring groups, Dr. King Cannon is also my mentor and we would go to lunch and we just sat and we would have a lunch and we didn't even necessarily talk about school. We would talk about things that I was doing over the summer or things I wanted to do. So <clears throat> it was nice to know that there was not only somebody there that I can talk to about my sciences, but somebody who was just also there to listen and help me if I needed someone just to talk to. Okay, so I'm an economics major and I took a uh, history of economic analysis class with Dr. Rose. Um, and I know when we were learning in that class, um, I noticed at some point that I believe every notable economist we learned about uh, was a male. Um, and because 50% of the accounting, or sorry, economics professors I've had since I came to this school are women, it was kind of a huge deal to me to see that just because the only people I was learning about were men does not mean that the only people who mattered in that field were men. Um, and so I think that was really what that did for me. See the transformation. Yes. Well, we not only, women are not only smart, but we know how to play sports, right, ladies? And we have a couple girls here from the basketball team. Raise your hand if you're on that basketball team. I actually played basketball in uh, high school. I wasn't that great, but I played. And uh, we're going to, uh, I want to thank everyone. Uh, thank you for your time.
for joining me and my, and my mom here uh, to talk about this group. But we're going when we come back, we're going to step onto the basketball court here at King's College, and we're going to have a little fun with the girls' basketball team, right? Maybe we'll even shoot a couple hoops. I have think. my sneakers. <laughs> All right, ready. let's do it. Well, thanks, girls, and we'll be right back here. You're watching the girls on SSPTV and SSPTV.com. Well, I hear you need a point guard on the King's College basketball team, and I think I'm the perfect height for it. What do you think, girls? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know where Debbie is. Did anyone see my mom? Here I am. <laughs> it's nice to feel short, isn't it? Welcome oh my to my club, God. the Short League Club. Yeah, but the short guys have a good, uh, good spot on this team, don't they? They do. Absolutely. We're with Absolutely. Uh, Coach Hodge and the girls on the uh, King's College, the Monarchs, right? And, uh, you know, we're here to talk about not only academics, but athletics, because we have a good team. We need a point guard. Hint, hint, anyone coming to King's College, point guard. Why don't you try out, Janine? I know, I should. What are they feeding you guys? I mean, come on, coach. <laughs> hey, we got half the rosters local, so it's something in the water. Something in the water, and we like it. So uh, this is your first year as head coach. Yes. Tell us about the team. Yes, uh, we got a lot of young guys. We had three seniors this year who got a lot of minutes, and then we have a lot of young post players who really did a ton for us this year. And like you said, we're looking for a couple of guards other than Aaron to extend the... Uh, She's a guard! How tall are you? 5'11". 5'11". 5'1". So, uh, yeah, we got a good group to uh, build around for next season. So, very exciting year. A lot of learning, a lot of teaching. So, we'll, we'll definitely improve for next season. Have you been scouting around? Oh, a ton. We're always out in games locally in the area, um, as well as going on the road. We have a couple of freshmen committed already. One's from New York. The other ones are from Pennsylvania. So we'll try to get a couple more uh, from all around. But we've had teams or players from teams from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, and I think Delaware in the past. So all right. usually good reach. Well, we have some captains with us. Guys, what do you get out of being on the basketball team other than you love the, the, the sport? We can. Um, well, I know I, I was just in the KCY filming, and um, <laughs> I think that it's really fun to be a part of the different activities on campus, um, especially basketball. Uh, there's a big community aspect that comes with the games, and there's a lot of publicity, and there's a lot of folks from downtown that don't even go to Kings or are associated with Kings at all that become your fans and become your friends, really. They really enjoy the games, and they really enjoy getting to know you and figuring out what you're good at, what you're not good at, and some of them even give you pointers sometimes, which is always fun. <laughs> so I think just getting to meet people like that and being in this type of environment is a lot of fun. Now, to play basketball, I know you got to keep up your grades. So how does academics and athletics work for you guys? Um, especially for us, I know that's a, a big thing, academics. Um, every Friday, just for our team, I don't know if every team does it, but especially us, we hand in monitoring forms. So it keeps up with how our grades are doing, how class is doing, tests, quizzes, things of that. And then um, we also have study halls for incoming freshmen. So that's what we do every, like, once a week, which is nice. Um, overall, I think we just... I mean, student athlete, student comes first. So I think we really care about our grades and academics. So I think we all put a big effort into what we do here. Yeah, well, I teach here too. And I know for some of the football players, I have to sign their papers. So I'm like, yeah. you better be nice to me. I'll write what I want on that paper right there. Good, really good or terrible or what their grades is for the class. So it's good that uh, there's accountability. Um, not only are you playing a sport, but you're learning a lot more like teamwork, right? What are you guys want to talk or they're like, no, let the, let the, that's why you got that title captain. You just keep that microphone over there. We'll stay on the basketball court. What you do you guys think wanna... the biggest difference is from when you played in high school as to now that you're in college? Um, definitely. I mean, how fast the game is. I mean, in college, you have a shot clock. So you're always thinking about what your next step is because you only have 30 seconds, unlike in high school where you could just stay up at the top of the key for as long as you need. <laughs> but I mean, I think it gets your mindset going of what your team and overall dynamic has to do. So I mean, I think that's our biggest thing. And I think the overall like college level is so much better. I mean, the people you play against is 
a huge difference compared to high school. Yeah, and I think also going along with that, um, the preparation in college is a lot more than I ever did in high school. We do scouts and we watch film after and before almost every single game, um, which is definitely something new. When I came here, I was like surprised about, but it's it's <laughs> fun and it's cool to like get to know your op opponents that way because we actually play every team um, on our side of the conference twice each season. So we really get to know the ins and outs of the teams and what each player is good at. Well, you mentioned how fast the game is in college basketball. My dad, who's 89 years old, loves to watch sports and he his favorite is girls college basketball. So he follows you guys and he follows everybody. Oh, awesome. And he just said that the game is so pure yep. because you know, it's the unadulterated from the form of the pro and he really, really enjoys it and he loves your team. Oh, All right, so what are, what are we going to do? Are we going to learn anything today? You guys going to teach us? Are we going to shoot? Are we going yeah. to let's throw some let's throw some balls around or something and not get hurt? What do you think? All right, let's do it. Let's go. Line them up. <laughs> Lefty. There it is. Yeah! There it is. <laughs> I want to steal the ball from you. <laughs> oh, watch this. Careful, Beck. <laughs> From way downtown. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's all right. right. Oh. Oh. oh, so that, that, was, that counts as an I air ball. I, I, Mom, you kill me. So it's, high. Funny, high. it's funny watching you do it. Oh, my God. It's, you have to be taller. Watch, watch. <laughs> I get scared. Oh. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, oh. Let me try it closer. Uh, I got it in the net. Oh my God. Did anyone get one yet? Yes. Yay. Woo. Away high five. Two dun, fingers dun, or dun, one. Dun, 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 dun. What finger do you do it on? And do you do it on the line? You do it on your thumb? Oh, cool. Oh, that was pretty good. All right, let's see. Do that on your head. Is it a part of the ball that's best? Uh, the flat part. Okay. Did you hear me? The flat part. I'm going to try to spin it to the front. Okay. Her nails are long. <laughs> Let's see who can get the lowest. Yeah! Oh, yeah! You're killing me. Left hand. What stance? Like this? Like you're taking a poop? Butt down. Butt down. Now we're going to cross it over to the back and forth. Good job, Mom. Like it has a disease. Do, 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 do. I could go around in a circle. How about under the leg? There you go. You can put your right leg up. Well, you know, there's only so much room down there. Back and forth. Oh, that's a re-slap.